Hello, dear ELL teaching colleagues. You probably will agree with me that a lot of times when we try to establish an effective collaboration with regular education teachers, we run into huge obstacles that ultimately result in an exhausted ELL teacher, unhappy content area teacher, and in an underserved ELL student. In this video, I'm going to share with you my opinion as to why I think these things keep happening and how we can learn to avoid them and also because I like to make my videos as practical and useful to you as possible I'm also going to use and share with you for free my Google slide presentation which is an ongoing collection of student samples examples of the real teachers tasks that they have accommodated or modified and also my specific tips and suggestions you will have full access to this document you will get a copy of it but because like I said it's an ongoing document you will need to check in frequently as I add new components to it so let's do it number one rule is to believe that 99% of the general education teachers we work with do genuinely want to be successful with their ELL students in the classroom. They do want to be helpful, they do want to be as professional as possible, and to make a positive impact on their academic and social lives. Having this belief definitely helps you, whether you are an ELL teacher, ELL consultant, or coordinator, make this necessary mental shift that allows allows you to approach your general education colleagues with a much more productive and positive attitude. Number two, content area teachers are overwhelmed not only with their curriculum demands, but they also have a lot of paperwork, a lot of meetings that are related to their area of expertise. You can see how having an ELL meeting or training actually adds up to what they already are required to take, or maybe they volunteer to take because they want to become even better in the area that they teach. And inside number three, which is also my observation, but I'm sure you will agree with me, is that unlike us, most of the general education teachers and I am not talking about all of the general education teachers. I am specifically zooming in onto those who seem to have the most trouble, first of all, getting motivated to help English language learners and then feeling confident enough to actually do that. So most of those general education teachers have very limited or no experience with a foreign language or a second language, either through their life experience or through formal trainings. We, the language people in the building, and usually either started taking uh, serious foreign language classes or come from a bilingual or multilingual backgrounds. We probably exhibited early interest in how languages work and we started studying them and not just learning them but also learning how to teach them. A lot of us are parents to bilingual children and this is what turns us into those language people who look at things through the lens of a language learner or language teacher. Now, teachers who teach other subject areas, um, they also chose their jobs for a reason. They love their subject area and they have been trained to teach it in a certain way. So, let's say a physics teacher is thinking in a very different way in terms of how to approach their content and how to deliver that. And also it is very hard for them, unless they have studied a foreign language, to step into our language learners shoes and and then even if they do how would they modify their content and how would they look at it with the eyes of a language learner or a language teacher to me this is not an easy concept now having been a language learner myself and having been teaching languages for 20 years now even i sometimes feel inadequate when i get a new student and if I had to teach another content area, I often ask myself, would I even be a successful content area teacher with all this language background? 
I do think that sometimes we set them up for a failure when we come up with such terms as even language objective. Let's take a look at your objective and split it into content objective and language objective. Let's use this tier two vocabulary or how about we skip the tier three vocabulary. So the, all of that is very new and I think it is important to remember that we should allow our regular education teachers take baby steps. They are newcomers in this field and we should approach them as such. So one more time, the point I'm trying to make with those three important insights is that regular education teachers are also human beings with their feelings, fears, and insecurities. It is super important for us to lower the stress level, to make them feel like they can do this and that they don't have to put their world upside down. One of my favorite strategies to approach a reluctant teacher or somebody who is willing and seems ready but just needs this extra boost of motivation is to share a successful story of an ELL newcomer, ideally from the same building. I will never forget how last year one of my high schoolers who was still very much a newcomer and who had gone through so much in his life shared with me how he was hanging out with one of his friends who is also from the same country and also speaks Spanish how that friend of his was genuinely surprised to hear how much my student could read and how much he could talk about what he was doing in US history class and also in his physics class and biology and I will tell you exactly why. Because last year, those general education teachers realized that it was better and more effective to look at the curriculum, choose key components, key vocabulary, key concepts, and to deliver those to the language learner we're talking about, to the newcomer, in a way that he would understand it and also he would be learning important topic-related vocabulary in English and that also would allow him to participate in small group activities and with a partner and even to present in front of the whole class, even if it was just a Google slide presentation with pictures that he worked on, that he put together. That made him feel like he was important that made him feel that he was learning and he was he was learning something every day thanks to those teachers who took his situation seriously and who took the time to sit down and pick the concepts and the vocabulary that they thought would be the most important for him to learn at that stage this kind of story makes your general education teachers First of all, feel empowered that they can also do this. This is possible to accomplish without killing yourself and changing everything in your world of teaching. And number two, they also want to be that teacher that an ELL newcomer would be talking about to their friend in their native language. If at this point you're feeling like it sounds all too good to be true or easier said than done, then make sure to watch part two of this video in which I share my very much existing Google slide presentation that I usually share with content teachers and in which I show step by step how this kind of modifications and accommodations could be done for newcomers in content area classes. As usual, thank you for watching and remember that you can find all of my materials as well as links to my video tutorials and interactive vocabulary lessons for ELL students on my Facebook page Aliona's ELL Class Live.